Tinge all of you. <laughs> we will be reviewing a movie I've talked before about, but only for a bit. It's called The Vam the Ketchup Vampires. It's a much better compare, as I've said last time. Way better than Twilight, plus their bell is smarter, and their vampire hero is quite awesome. We all started with these two vampires in the circus. Each of them, they were vegetarians. They only ate ketchup or anything ketchupy, and they had raised their son Pino, who was also a vegetarian. They never liked anything bloody, and now they want to look for a girlfriend for her for their son, who is Pino, a direct descendant of Dracula, with their relatives of the fierce Count Dracula. The ketchup vampires are a different, more friendly breed of vampires. But some of their relatives are still pretty bad. Put them all conspicuously to get ready for the funniest, scariest case of carriage you ever came to Transylvania. The good vampires are short of vegetarian, they never touch anything strong in tomato juice. Bad vampires, after all, more t more traditional meals like blood and instant battle for Crow Dracula is going on. If they look in the books, you got the key to make this a bloodthirsty vampire, like you said. They like. But I rest my keys. Let's get back. Dave. First of all, they come to a new place called Russianstein. I mean, ugh, sorry, my script right, the script right and my daughter's dead, I was not, oh yeah, Rubenstein. It's a place for the home for Professor von Rubenstein, where he, where he and his granddaughter live, named Bella. Yeah, she's a better Bella than the Bella from Twilight. And unfortunately, the three vamp, the three vegetarian vampires need a place to stay. They have nowhere to go. As soon as they got there, it was rainy and cold. The only they could eat was ketchup from the hot dog stand. Pino went to go look, and as her and as she, the granddaughter Bella, went to go ask if she could dress up like a vampire this year for Halloween. She, uh, her grandfather, always worries about her when it comes to vampires. What do you expect? That girl knows how vampires are, and they also. He, she has a she has an uncle who likes theater to act it, but not very good at it. Who does all the cooking, which he sucks at. So in the end, Pino decided to see if they can work for their ketchup and their food. So he went to go to meet the professor, Professor von Rubenstein, or I would just call him the professor for short. And so when he came in, he thought that Pino was going to be a dangerous vampire, but in the end, he was helping her. I'll open a can of ketchup and tomatoes. This professor, he owns a factory that makes vegetable soup, tomato soup, anything ketchup, or even the best sauce for spaghetti and pasta. So they made a deal that they would work for him, that if they let him live in the house, from his mother and father and himself. And the professor thought it would be nice, but then he warns him to not go near his precious granddaughter, who is Bella. She's a pretty little thing. She doesn't look like the Bella from the Twilight. She has blonde hair, and believe me, she's a better Bella than the Bella we see from Twilight. Pfft. I hate Twilight. It's stupid. <laughs> In any case, later on, he keeps passing notes, but then he sees Bella, and he falls in love for Bella, but he can't do anything about it, because he promised the professor he wouldn't date his girl, his, his granddaughter. And then they were, then the father and mother found out about it, and they were very, very upset about it. They could, they told him, no, Pino, you cannot. Remember, you must remember that. She's a human. You're a vampire. You cannot. And then they remember their past, where she and her sister were young, a uh, past, where she was, where she was going to find someone to love and be married to someone. And he was actually a very, a very handsome vampire boy. The father of Pino, of course. And in the end, when she, when she was learning um, some vampire secrets from her teacher, unfortunately she messed up and had goop on her face. 
goop that was going to help her, uh, you know, use it to go into the sunlight. But in the end, in the end, the mother of Pino, she was trying with her to be with Pino's father. But they thought it was going to be her. But then once they see, once they see um, her sister, uh, Rubella was just ugly. Rubella is really ugly. But in the end, he couldn't stand her because he she loves eating blood sausage. It seems to be that Pino's father was a vegetarian vampire as well when he talked about it. And unfortunately, they wanted to escape their family because they couldn't stand second blood. They'd rather have vegetarian ketchup or, or tomato sauce or tomato soup, which I adore, which I used to like drink, eating a lot when I was younger. <laughs> In any case. <clears throat> After that, they escaped to the circus, and now we are here. And, well, Pino's mom is going to try to ask for a relative to come and give some vampire friends for him. They don't want, she doesn't want her son to be growing up with no relative, no real vampire kids to hang out with. So, in the end, she sent a letter to them. And the sister, oh God, the sister Rubella is nasty. And the mother's name is Margaret. Yes, yeah, sorry, I keep forgetting her names. But yes. But also, in their little home, they made the basement to their little home. I forgot to mention that. And they even used some old junk to make beds and all sorts of things. They even used some old glass they found to make do inventions to invent their own tomatoes. So they can eat tomato soup and vegetables and all sorts of tomato-like treats. And once the letter was sent to the, uh, to the aunt, Rubella, as I would call it because she's rude, her and her husband were waiting for their dinner. It was cooked by their chef, who has taken a little or take a little vampire boy, a little orphan vampire boy who's a little baby. He bad and growing growing teeth. And if he doesn't do anything right, they'll gonna throw him out. He's a little baby vampire boy. He hasn't grown any baby teeth. Poor little thing. In any case, as it is, when they got the letter from the they were originally going to show their two their two relatives to them. But before they could, they wanted to bring get the vampire magic secret from the teacher. But sadly, the magic, sadly the old the old vampire teacher. Well, the thing is, he woke up and well, mm, what can I say? He it was his birthday. He wanted a cake. He wasn't going to give him any information unless they give him a birthday cake. So she, so the chef baked a big birthday cake with his fangs and everything. And there's even a little bit of music in the movies too, just a little bit of it, of course, not a lot of songs. Also, then as the then as the birthday cake was baked, he almost dropped it on the bats, almost. Hmm. In any case. Uh, sorry guys, I'm getting kind of tired. I'll be right back. I gotta go. Alright, I'm back, folks. Alright. As the master enjoyed his birthday cake, but in the end, he was only revealed only two spells. And then one of the children that was going to be sent there was given a bat, a pet bat named Hugo, who was not a very um, fast awakened bat as it is. So they were told to travel there to meet their relatives, to meet Margaret, her husband, and their son, Pino. And they were planning to, well, see if they can do some nasty tricks on the lab and say, Rubella and her husband and these kids are the villains of our story, I do believe, as they fly through Transylvania to where they are. But in the end, Pino sends a love letter to Bella, and Bella doesn't know who he, who he is. And in the end, they both fell in love. But there's some competition, some slow and competition happened between them actually. And you're about to find out how. Once the cousins reached, they came in salutations to the parents and they were offered some tomato soup, but they hate tomatoes. Once they met Pino, I'm afraid the cousin, the girl one, fell in love with Pino. Yeah, even then vampires or cousins had to be marriage. Yuck. Cousins. She fell in love with them. But in some confusion she didn't remember what they were there for. And her brother, who doesn't want to do anything with the love, wants them to just do what their job were told. <laughs> because they have for Pino's folks in revenge. But in the end, 
when Peter was talking about Bella, she thought that he, he was talking about her, but in the end it was Bella, the little, the human girl. In the end, those two sneaked up together like Romeo and Juliet. And they fell in love. And explained that she, he wants to be human. But Bella says she loves him just for who he is. And unfortunately, when she saw, unfortunately, when the girl cousin, when she saw them, so basically, yeah. <sighs> she felt heartbroken, disastrous, and then she wanted to ruin the friendship between Bella and Pina. And she tried to, many times, in fact, try to keep them apart. And that got her into trouble with the, with her relatives. One night, when she kept him inside, all night, Bella was heartbroken. And the next day, when she tried to go, when he tries to explain how it is, she wouldn't let him. So, she went with someone else to go to dance. And in the end, she tried to escape. She tried to escape, but meanwhile... They send a Hugo over to get another potion, and they were able to, but then Hugo gets to sing how his thoughts about being a bad and how it's not always right that he has to deal with all this stuff. But, that's how it is. As he got the potion, he brought it back, and they were able to use it, but sadly, they were stopped by conveniences and all that. And then, Pino went over to the Halloween party, and she was dancing with a guy dressed up as a devil for date, and he proved himself to her, and in the end... They got back together. So yeah, that's the story of The Catch of Vampires. It's a very old movie. It was made back in the 90s. And yeah, it was made in 1995, the year of that. The movie is very old, yet it's very difficult. The plot seems to be relevant, but the rel but the breed of vegetarian vampires was just a creative idea, I would say. The castle and everyone, all the characters were just interesting, as always. But let me give you the full reputation of the characters' names as I got them mixed up. This is what they are. If you got the books, I have to continue the lines that my daughters made. You got the makings of the blood men, lust, and vampires as you like. The problem with the bad vampires is that the catch vampires took off with the book a long time ago. Oopsies. Sorry, that's for the second movie. <laughs> I can't exactly reveal that much. But I can, I can reveal the names and characters, though. Let's see. Oh, yes. Hebroid and Siegfried. They're his parents. I keep getting... No, wait. Sorry about that. Never mind. But, yeah. If you want to learn anything more about the Catch Vampires, you have to go on Wikipedia for it. In any case, guys, I have to get fed. Good night, folks, and have a pleasant dreams! <laughs> Okay, my brony watchers, remember to subscribe to my channel, and remember, there's always more with me than meets the eye, or should I say, more than meets a white rose. Night, folks. <laughs>